Stearic acid is a wonderfully versatile ingredient that I took far too long to fully appreciate. In this ingredient deep dive, I'm going to share with you why stearic acid is something you should definitely have in your DIY ingredients pantry. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are doing another ingredient deep dive, this time into stearic acid. In today's video, we will be covering what stearic acid is, what it's for, how to use it, what you can use instead, and five free formulations to make with it. As always, think of these as the partner video for the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on the same ingredient. So if you are looking for a quick written reference on the stearic acid, make sure you are checking out the encyclopedia entry. It is linked in the description box below this video. Let's dive in. What is stearic acid? Stearic acid is a naturally occurring fatty acid that has been isolated, so it's just that one thing. It's found at varying concentrations in many of the oils and butters that we already know and love. Cocoa butter contains approximately 36% stearic acid. Shea butter contains approximately 38% stearic acid. Acid. Mango butter contains about 40% stearic acid, and cocum butter contains a whopping 54-ish percent stearic acid. Stearic acid can also be found in quite a few liquid oils, though at substantially lower concentrations. Plum oil contains about 2% stearic acid, hazelnut oil about 3%, sunflower oil around 4%, and flaxseed oil around 5%. All of these numbers were taken from the very helpful Modern Cosmetics textbook. If you would like to learn more about this book, I have a full review of it over at humblebeeandme.com, and I'll I'll link it in the description box below this video. Stearic acid is sold as little white beads or white pellets. It has a very long shelf life, it's inexpensive, and it's very versatile, so I highly recommend having some on hand. Because of the acid in the name stearic acid, stearic acid is sometimes confused for other ingredients like citric acid and lactic acid. Stearic acid is very different from acidic acids like citric acid and lactic acid, and stearic acid will not lower the pH of your formulations. Why do we use stearic acid in our formulations. Stearic acid is included in formulations primarily as a hardener or thickener, and it also adds some lovely richness. It contributes a buttery, creamy, fatty hardening and thickening that isn't waxy, and that can come in very, very useful in a lot of places. In emulsions like lotions and creams, stearic acid thickens and adds a bit of richness, but unlike wax, which I have used in the past and did use before I discovered stearic acid, you don't get kind of this skin grippy skittiness that waxes can bring to emulsions if used in even relatively low concentrations. Stearic acid is also lovely in anhydrous formulations where it can thicken and harden without any wax. One way I like to think of it is that stearic acid can take a liquid oil and transform it into something that feels like a butter. You can blend stearic acid with other fatty thickeners like cetyl alcohol or cetyl alcohol and waxes like beeswax or candelilla wax to get you know, the best of everything. Stearic acid is also really useful for raising the melting point of anhydrous formulations. So if you are making a body butter and you live somewhere really hot and you're having issues with it melting, give stearic acid a try. Chances are good there's already quite a lot of stearic acid acid in your body butter formulation naturally present in the butters that you're using. So with isolated stearic acid, you can just gently turn up the concentration of the stearic acid until you have something that is stable in your climate. I also love stearic acid for thickening up wash off anhydrous products like cleansing bombs because it rinses off the skin much more nicely and completely than waxes generally do. How do you work with stearic acid? Since stearic acid is a firm solid, you're going to need to melt it before you can do much anything with it. It melts around 69.3 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 156.7 degrees Fahrenheit. This is actually a higher melting point than beeswax and is just a smidge lower than the melting point of candelilla wax. Just how much stearic acid you'll need in any given formulation will depend very heavily on what you're making and how hard you want it to be. The more stearic acid you use, the thicker or harder your end product will be. Something to keep in mind is that lots of stearic acid can tip from being really rich to starting to be a little bit skiddy or grabby on the skin, so keep that in mind. If you're making something and going, hmm, this kind of feels a little not awesome on the skin, maybe try dialing back the stearic acid or blending it with something a little slippier like cetyl alcohol or cetyl alcohol. In emulsions, you'll generally use stearic acid in the 1 to 5% range, so you could use more. Just Try it and see what you think. In anhydrous formulations, it'll really depend on everything else that is going on in your formulation. I doubt you'd end up using more than 40 to 50% of stearic acid, but you could. Try it, 
have fun, see what happens. To show you how stearic acid thickens liquid oils, I've prepared five mixtures with safflower oil. 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% stearic acid. Each of these mixtures was melted in a water bath and then stirred as it cooled. The 5% mixture is still liquid, but it definitely has more body and more richness than plain safflower oil does. The 10% mixture has a thicker jelly-like substance that turns into more of a liquid when worked about. It has a really definite richness boost when compared to just the liquid oil. The 20% stearic acid mixture is a scoopable soft solid. It's starting to lean towards a very buttery consistency, and I think this could possibly work for a whipped body butter depending on the ambient temperature. It's really rich and creamy and has great slip. The 30% stearic acid mixture is a firm, soft solid that really is quite butter-like. When massaged into the skin, it melts fairly readily and has great slip and richness and skin feel. The 40% stearic acid mixture is a very firm solid that is hard to press a finger into. When worked into the skin, it has a really rich, butter-like feel and quite lovely slip. For more demonstrations and concentrations, please check out the stearic acid and liquid oil ratio guide I shared on the blog back in 2017. I'll link to it in the description box below. What can you use instead of stearic acid? Cetyryl alcohol is probably the closest thing I can suggest, though it's not as potent of a thickener and it also has more of a oily slippiness than a buttery richness to it, so there's a chance you're going to have to tweak your formulations. In a formulation where stearic acid and cetyl alcohol are blended, cetyryl alcohol is quite a good alternative. You can try true waxes, but beware of that waxiness. If you're using stearic acid to thicken something to avoid waxiness, true waxes aren't a good alternative. You could also try pseudo waxes. These are waxes made from hydrogenated vegetable oils. They tend to have a nice creamy thickening. You'll have to do some experiments though. Check out the experiments I shared on my website using olive wax and almond almond wax and compare those to the stearic acid ratio experiments I did to sort of see where you might want to start making that swap. Butters that contain stearic acid typically aren't a great swap for pure stearic acid simply because they contain lots of other things as well as the stearic acid. For a rough food analogy, it would be a bit like trying to use an apple in a cake recipe instead of the sugar it calls for. Yes, apples do contain some sugars, but they also contain a lot of other things and if you're introducing, you know, all that other apple goodness into a cake, you're definitely going to throw a few things off. And let's wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using stearic acid. Formulation number one is my Argan Rose Conditioning Hair Balm. This formulation is basically a solid anhydrous leave-in hair conditioner. I chose to thicken it with a blend of stearic acid, cetyl alcohol, and just a wee bit of candelilla wax because this gives the balm a firm consistency, making it hard to over apply, but thanks to the stearic acid and the cetyl alcohol, it is isn't waxy, which wasn't a desirable characteristic for this hair formulation. Formulation number two is my Almond Oat Emulsified Body Butter. In this formulation, I've used a blend of stearic acid and cetyl alcohol as an alternative to cetyryl alcohol. These ingredients add thickness and viscosity to a rich emulsified body butter. This formulation is emulsified with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate, and if you would like to learn more about this emulsifier, I recently shared a deep dive into that ingredient as well, so check that out. Formulation number three is my intense hand rescue cream. This decadent hand cream formulation was inspired by a first aid beauty product. And stearic acid is actually one of the more prominent ingredients in the oil phase, which is comprised of a blend of seven different emollients. The stearic acid helps add both structure and richness to this gorgeous emulsion. Formulation number four is my Coco Coconut Vegan Body Butter Bars. As you can probably guess from the name, this formulation stars cocoa butter and coconut oil. Cocoa butter can work brilliantly on its own as the sole thickener in a solid body butter bar, but you can't add too much of anything softer like coconut oil without making the entire formulation a bit too soft to be a standalone bar. I elected to include some extra hardeners in this formulation in the form of stearic acid, cetyl alcohol, and a tiny bit of candelilla wax so I could include a decent amount of coconut oil on these bars and still have them be bars with a buttery melt rather than a waxy one. And formulation number five is my soothing hand butter where I really take advantage of stearic acid's ability to turn 
softer oils into something that feels really buttery. This formulation stars some ultra creamy emollients and beautiful botanical infused oils to create a really sumptuous, buttery skin treat. If you're sporting some dry hands that could use a bit of love, this formulation is a wonderful choice. And that's it. That has been our deep dive into stearic acid. If you'd like to learn how to make that gorgeous almond oat emulsified body butter I mentioned a few moments ago, click here. And if you'd like to learn more about glycerol stearate and PEG100 stearate, possibly my favorite emulsifier, click here. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.